Hi, I'm Claire Ridgeway. I write Tudor history books and one of those books was Sweating Sickness in a Nutshell. And today I want to talk about COVID-19, coronavirus, which of course is having an impact in our world, and sweating sickness. Now I did a video on sweating sickness back in 2014 and it's suddenly getting lots and lots of views on YouTube and lots of new comments as well. And I've been struck struck by just how many of those comments are comparing it to COVID-19 coronavirus, um, which of course is causing lots of devastation in our world and causing many of us as well to be confined to our homes. Quite a few people are commenting saying that, oh, sweating sickness was probably coronavirus, or they're commenting saying how similar these two illnesses are. So I just wanted to address this to topic and compare the two illnesses, um, thinking about the contemporary reports, what we know of sweating sickness and what we know about this present virus. By the way, I go into far more detail on sweating sickness in my video on that, which I'll give you a link to, and also in my book, Sweating Sickness in a Nutshell. So let's start by giving you an overview of sweating sickness in Tudor, England. Now, the first outbreak of sweating sickness recorded in England was in the summer of 1485. And there were a further four outbreaks in 1508, 1517, 1528 and 1551. But also it's thought that there were sort of smaller, more localised outbreaks as well at different times. For example, there's evidence that there may have been an outbreak in the sort of Ludlow area and the marches in 1502 and that it possibly killed Arthur Tudor, Prince of Wales, um, because his wife, Catherine of Aragon, was ill at the time. And we know that the death rate was very high in that area that year. Now, sweating sickness was highly contagious and it had a devastating effect on the population. 16th century physician Dr John Keyes wrote of how towns thought themselves lucky if half of their people survived outbreaks of sweating sickness. Now, the symptoms of sweating sickness included fever and sweating, hence the name, redness of face and body, thirst, fever, headache, breathlessness, muscle ache, um, muscle ache, sorry, abdominal pain, delirium at some times, palpitations and lethargy. Sweating sickness came on very quickly and it could also kill very quickly. Contemporary chroniclers, scholars, ambassadors and physicians all noted its speed, with Edward Hall writing of how it could kill in two to three hours and the Venetian ambassador saying four to five hours and 24 hours at the very maximum. Once a patient got past the 24 hour mark, they tended to get better, they tended to survive. It was very different to influenza epidemics. Influenza was known at the time and these epidemics affected England. And those um, influenza outbreaks were characterised by a cough, fever and a sensation of constriction to the heart, of the heart and lungs. It was also different to other illnesses of the time that tended to affect the elderly population, the infirm and young children. Sweating sickness weirdly tended to prey on rich young men and the student populations of Oxford and Cambridge were hit badly and so were monastic communities. And foreigners in England either escaped it entirely or had it very mildly. That's very odd. So that's sweating sickness, but what about COVID-19? Well, here are some facts based on what we know at present on this worldwide pandemic. Um, I'm using the World Health Organization's information on it rather than looking at newspapers, the media as my source. I'm not a doctor, I'm not even a scientist, which is why I'm basing this on the information given by the World Health Organization, who are, of course, experts. 
COVID-19 is a new virus. It was totally unknown before the first outbreak in Wuhan in China, and that was recorded in December 2019. Its main symptoms are fever, tiredness and a dry cough. But other symptoms can include aches and pains, runny nose and congestion, sore throat and diarrhoea. Some people can have the virus without displaying any symptoms at all. About one in six people go on to become seriously ill and start to have difficulties in breathing. The elderly and people with underlying health issues are more likely to develop serious illness. It spreads through droplets from the nose and mouth of infected people. These droplets then land on objects and surfaces, which are then touched by others, who then touch their eyes, their noses, their mouths, and that's how it is spread. Or a person can catch it by breathing in those infected droplets. The source of it is currently unknown. The WHO, World Health Organization, explains all available evidence suggests that SARS-CoV-2 has a natural animal origin and is not a constructed virus. As of the 12th of April 2020, 213 countries, areas or territories have cases and there have been over one and a half million confirmed cases worldwide as I speak. Those are the statistics today as I do this talk. Now, I can understand why people are comparing it to sweating sickness, as that had never been seen before in England before 1485. It was completely new. It caused panic. It killed thousands of people. But these two illnesses are actually two very different beasts. The symptoms just don't match. Sweating sickness caused a fever, yes, but there's no mention in any of the contemporary accounts of a cough. Also, sweating sickness killed in just a few hours, with 24 hours being the maximum from the first symptoms being displayed. Whereas in people who've died of coronavirus, the time from the first symptoms to death is from two to eight weeks. Just no similarities there at all. As I mentioned, at the moment, coronavirus is affecting people in 213 different countries. It is impossible for us to know how sweating sickness um, would have spread in the 16th century if people had been connected in the same way back then, if it, there was the travel that we have today. In the 1528 epidemic, records suggest that an English ship took the illness to Hamburg, where 1,000 people died of it in less than 24 hours. It then spread along the Baltic, with cases being reported in Scandinavia, spread further into Germany and into Austria. And in Vienna, which was under Turkish siege at the time, it's only affected the Austrian population and not the Turks. How weird is that? Now, sweating sickness disappeared after 1551 in England. It was never heard of again in England after that time. But something similar affected Leipzig in the mid 17th century, France on three occasions in the 19th century, northern Spain in 1835, northern Italy in 1849 and Holland in 1850. Now, as I speak, possible vaccines and drug treatments for COVID-19 are being investigated. And hopefully in the next year or so, we will have a vaccine. For now, we can follow the guidelines of our governments. We can wash our hands regularly, um, washing them properly, washing them really well. We can practice social distancing. We can stay in our homes. We can do all the things that are being recommended to us by the experts. Of course, there wasn't that in Tudor times. They didn't realise the importance of washing their hands. And we kind of look back on that and think how stupid they were, but how could they know? And I do wonder what future generations will think of the way that we're handling this virus. I think 
living through this now does help to give us some insight into how Tudor people must have felt during epidemics of influenza, sweating sickness and plague. We can understand King Henry VIII being completely paranoid about illness and at the first sign of someone showing symptoms at his court, escaping London to the country to try and keep himself safe. It just gives us more of an insight into their lives. So I hope I've, I've given you some insight into why I don't believe that sweating sickness is like coronavirus. Uh, sweating sickness was sweating sickness. There are lots of theories about what sweating sickness really was. And I'm not an expert, I'm not a scientist, but nobody can agree on it. And it seems to be so very different to all the illnesses that we do know of. I think sweating sickness was sweating sickness, just as coronavirus is coronavirus. So anyway, stay safe and thank you for tuning in.